HD Smartcast. You are listening to a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. Hi, I'm Satya Sundaram from Mint's personal finance team. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money. Let me start this episode by narrating a small story. There's a scorpion and a frog which met on the bank of a gushing stream. They both wanted to cross to the other side of the stream. So the scorpion nicely asked the frog to carry him across on its back. This makes the frog a little suspicious. So it asked, "How do I know you won't sting me?" For that the scorpion said, "Because if I do, I will also fall in the stream with you and die." That was a good reason for the frog to trust the scorpion. So he allowed the scorpion to climb aboard and jumped across the flowing water. They get halfway across the stream and the scorpion stings the frog directly in the middle of his back. The frog feels the onset of the scorpion's poison and starts to sink. The frog manages one dying breath and asks the scorpion, "Why?" And the scorpion replies, "I can't help it. It's in my nature." The frog dies and so is the scorpion. It's a sad story. But do you wonder why I'm saying this in a personal finance podcast? Because there's a lesson to learn from it. To talk about it, we have with us Mr. Sahil Kapoor, head of products and market strategist at DSP Mutual Fund. Hi. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money, a personal finance podcast where we help you understand basic money concepts and share strategies for you to build your wealth. So let's get started on your money journey. Hi Sahil, good morning. Welcome to Why Not Mint Money. Hi, thank you. Thanks a lot for having me. Sahil, tell us what is the personal finance lesson that we can take from the frog and the scorpion story? I think it's a story which has many meanings, a lot of meanings for different people. What I take away at different points when i hear about hear this story again and again so one important lesson is that uh, you do investing as per your nature what happens is when we look at markets when we look at returns when we look at our neighbors buying a new car we feel that we need to rush and make money faster right and this is a mistake i think we need not do that we need to find instruments that suits us right we need to change our question a lot of people ask a question how good is this investment or which is the best fund to invest in right i think the best question is to ask is which is the best investment for me because each individual reacts differently to give you another analogy which is i think very important and uh, probably science is beginning to uh, you know uh, tell us more about it for example if you ate an apple and i ate an apple our blood sugar uh the response to the blood sugar will be very very different the scale or what we call the glycemic index is can range from 45 to 90 which is like eating sugar or eating a non sugar product right it's very different it, it depends on your are uh, an individual i think similarly each investment is different when you react to it when you put yourself into it so i what the key takeaway which i take from this story is stick to what suits you what suits your nature don't jump on what's doing well right now or what will do well according to some experts stick to things that you understand and you can wade through the volatility so as i said you just mentioned that uh, every investor should know what investment product suits them the best so how do they know that first thing is to find out what your goal is so i think a lot of people run around uh, finding which is the highest return product but if you for example take a goal that i after 20 years i want to let's say buy a house right it's a very straightforward goal and then you look at what market returns have been delivered over time take a very very conservative approach roughly what i do is take a median of fixed income return and equity return and say that if i am good enough i can make that median return over the next 20 years if that is the case i back calculate you know how much money do i need to save today and reach there and then you go to that instrument and invest in that right so it's not a very uh, let's say fool proof or scientific method but this is as close to reality as you can be by being conservative and then you work backwards you know do uh, say for you know for example we pay emis right we religiously pay emis for a home loan or any other product that we purchase on on loan i think similarly we should be very very focused on our investments focus on the consistency and the discipline rather than you know varying returns and time horizons and outperformance and underperformance 
understand so if we have to take one uh, financial goal say if somebody have a retirement as their financial goal then they have to figure out how much they would be requiring for their retirement and then they back calculate using the online tools that are available um Absolutely. and then they have to figure out how much they have to invest and they have to find the invest right investment product uh, that will suit uh, their requirement absolutely yeah. yes sahil you've been in the capital markets industry for more than a decade you work for mutual funds invest in mutual funds talk about mutual funds also you are a good storyteller so uh, can you share a few stories uh, from your kitty that highlights the key points to remember about mutual fund investments i think a lot of people talk about the power of thinking big you know people talk about big goals and you know big ideas i believe in something called as power of thinking small right and it's a very important concept to understand i'll give you a very small story or an anecdote so in 2000s early 2000s the us cycling team which participated in olympics won uh, i think 7 or 8 out of 10 medals right one of the highest ever and uh, prior 76 history they had won only one medal right okay how this change came about the coach uh, you know sir dave blaceford when he came and became the head coach he said that i'm going to think small i'm going to do 1% incremental improvement in all my departments you know i'm going to improve my team's fitness by a percent you know and i'm going to improve my cycles by a percent i'm going to improve my tires by 1% so he focused on small small improvements i usually say that wars are not won by generals alone right it's won by all the small uh what we call uh, you know the pawns or the soldiers which are there on the ground right every small things matter so i think the power of thinking small is very important and when it comes to mutual fund a lot of people who invest in mutual funds may or may not be financially very very savvy right investing and in saving is more about our discipline about, about emotions than about mathematics or science right so the most important thing when we do investing is how consistent we are Right. and it doesn't need to need uh, for you to be a scientist to be consistent you can do it otherwise also so the power of small happens when you go and invest in a very very systematic way the mutual fund industry has called it sip the systematic investment plan where you put in a equal uh, weighted monthly emi type investment every month in a investment instrument and that i think is a power of thinking small that you do small small stuff over a very long period of time the results vary and mm-hmm. uh, but the outcome uh, is generally more consistent with what you can think today right uh, the ju- the journey itself could be very very volatile or varied but uh, the outcome will probably get you closer to your goal so i think this is an important lesson which i have learned from uh, power of thinking small understand okay so do you have any example in the numerical terms on what if somebody starts investing small amount consistently for say 15 or 20 years and what would that amount be at the end of the end year sure let's say that we're going to invest uh, every month 5000 rupees over a 20 year period so you invest 5000 every month and uh, let's assume that it's going to make 10% return which is a fair number i think uh, over the last 20 years nifty would have given the benchmark nifty index equity returns would have been closer to 13 14% and fixed income returns are close to 7 8% so let's say that uh, hypothetically we could make 10% returns over the next 20 years so if you invest 5000 every month the total sum that you will invest is about 12 lakh rupees right over the next 20 years but your absolute number at the end of 20 years will become 38 lakhs 28000 rupees approximately right so which is a very large number that by saving just about 5000 rupees you end up making closer to 40 lakh rupees over the next 20 years so if you increase this number and take it higher that means if you start let's say you know investing a very high sum let's say 10000 rupees a month uh, that number will become 76 lakhs right a very very meaningfully large number and uh, another addition that you could do as i said earlier is like using a let's say top up sip or what we call flex stp and sip that means when markets fall you increase your sip amount you don't invest 5000 but you invest even more right so that will even enhance your returns even more and uh, these tools are possible and available automatically you don't have to do it manually you can just preset them and they work for you So I think this is something which will work 
very well for an investor who has a long term horizon sahil this also reminds me of quote uh, by charlie munger it says take a simple idea and take it very seriously it's a very small quote but has a very deep meaning in it uh anyways uh, i have also come across one of your uh, blog posts in which you talked about a book called fire fighting you narrated some stories from it and highlighted a few points that could come handy in the investing journey can you share any interesting stories from that sure i think one of the key takeaways that i've seen in my career is a lot of people create financial goals but they are uh, there are hurdles in between uh, for example a lot of us in india particularly are very very susceptible to family emergencies or specifically medical emergencies and which takes away a lot of our savings uh, and uh, you know it can dent our uh, savings and our goals financial goals particularly but one idea is that you need to plan for these emergencies in in uh, much before then they happen and you have to have situations where you have emergency fund you have ample amount of insurance and one of the stories which i narrated in one of my blogs is uh is about you know lighting an emergency uh, escape fire what it is called is an escape fire so just to give you a very very brief uh, idea on what it is so if there is a very large inferno a uh, lot of fire fighters are called right so let's say 10 15 engines rush to a place let's assume that it's a grassland jahan badi badi grass hai there is a, a lot of fire there and there is a big inferno and let's assume that there are 8 10 engines who rush to that place and uh, what happens usually is that even fire fighters find it tough to control these kind of fires right and there is an instance where i talk about a fire which happened like this right a very big grassland where uh, some fire fighters drop in from a helicopter and they see that there is a very large inferno they find a place to stand above the fire and start to you know put water on it and so that they can control the fire but what happens is that the fire is very fast it is catching up faster than the fire fighters can fight it so one of the fire fighters jumps and goes to the other end and he lights a fire there himself you know he lights a fire why he lights a fire on his own when there is already inferno going on because he clears a area where all the grass which is there which is the com- com- combustible fuel for the fire he clears all the grass and then he stands there and then fights the fire you know he has a area to himself where there is no grass it has already burned down so the fire fighter is safe and his ability to withstand that inferno is very very high so i think this is an escape fire sometimes when we see that our things are not going right we generally react and in those situations we generally make mistakes it's very very important to create these kind of uh, what i call reinforcements in your life one of the easiest way to do it is to use asset allocation so for example if you are an investor if you invest in equity markets you should have ideally a portion of your investments going into debt markets or to cash uh, you know keep a little bit of portion in these uh, you know instruments which are less volatile and secondly they act as let's say a seat belt you know when you are driving you need brakes you need seat belt so these are the risk mitigating factors in your portfolio and when things are not right uh, they help you a lot so g- to give you one instance in 2020 when covid happened many people saw their portfolio fall down to 5 year low 10 year low the returns got wiped out just imagine if you had to exit all your investments that day for any reason for emergency or for any reason right what would be your return it'd be very very low right so sitting today we don't know what will what is our exit date we are investing we are doing sip we are long term investors but we don't know at what date we'll exit and what the market will be asset allocation helps you reduce that volatility right you might not get out at a very very opportune time or the best time or you might you know get the best time but as a asset allocation will make sure that that time may not be good enough but it will not be the worst time right so that helps you cut out the volatility and cut out the noise so i think this is a very important lesson and principle that all of us should follow at stamp really at report uh as an investor how do they know what asset allocation suits them so one of the easiest way to understand asset allocation is to again go back to your goal i think that is a fundamentally important 
point to note second thing is to know your risk appetite right it's very very tough to know your risk appetite it's easy to say uh but uh, for example if you've been a fixed income investor all your life you've invested only in fds you should probably start investing and get a flavor of uh equity only through a very small hybrid fund for example there is a category called equity savings fund which is a conservative uh, category of hybrids you know which invests only between 20 to 50% in equity and that too in a hedged manner that will give you a flavor of equity markets but it will also tell you where your risk appetite lies right so you start slow and then you see how much of a drawdown uh you can take right so if you are a long term investor sorry sorry to interrupt you uh, could yes. you explain what draw, drawdown is sure so roughly you should uh, you know look at what kind of a drawdown you take for example if you're invest invested at rupees let's say if you invested rupees 100 today and you keep on investing that sum every month there will be a month when markets will fall things will go wrong let's assume that your total investment on that day was 1000 rupees right that 1000 rupees becomes 900 let's assume because of the market conditions there is a drawdown of 10% that means you've lost 10% of value of your investable uh, you know sum right now which is invested in the market right now that 10% drawdown could be discomforting for some people it could be irrelevant for others they feel that it's just market movement right i don't need to worry about it but a lot of people will worry about that number right and when they worry about it they might take out their money from the market fearing that you know i can't take this kind these kind of losses right so you need to know that number where your emotions come into picture and try and create an asset allocation which will safeguard you from hitting that number again and again so for example i am okay taking a 20% drawdown that means even if my portfolio falls 20% i am not perturbed right but i am not happy with a 25 30% drawdown right so i choose an asset allocation basis the return profile that helps me avoid these kind of drawdowns of course you can't avoid it but uh, at least by looking at what has happened in the history you could create the guardrails which will help you somewhat when things go wrong right so this is a very important parameter where you select your asset allocation basis what uh, basis the conditions if they occur you will become fearful you know you need to avoid them right so this is something which will help you remain in the market stay invested in the market which will eventually give you your desired results Sahil, uh, the important aspect of asset allocation that I really like the most is that when I require funds in the next two years or three years, I have to slowly, gradually, uh, you know, if I'm invested in equity, I have to gradually withdraw myself from that the invested amount from the equity and put it in uh, debt funds, so that debt funds okay. or the fixed income segment, so that uh, it will not get impacted by the market volatility. Uh, so how important Absolutely. it is to maintain. uh the funds that you require in the next 2 to 3 years uh in the fixed income segment and if one is investing in equity uh what is the minimum uh investment horizon they should have to get decent returns from equity so to answer your first question i think it's uh, you have to be very fortunate to be so well planned right a lot of us are not so fortunate that we know what kind of you know sums of money we'll require let's say one or two months but for some some amount of fixed goals for example when we know that some education is coming up or some uh, life event is coming up in that case what you said what systematic withdrawal plan just like systematic investment plan you you withdraw your money or you do a systematic transfer what is what we call stp you remove your money from equity every month a certain proportion and put it into debt funds or funds which don't have a lot of volatility right i think that's a very important principle because it takes away your burden of timing the market right you don't you don't want to and you don't have to know when the market is high or low and this plan lets you get out on an average with decent returns i think that is something which is really helpful about this but for that you need to be very well planned unfortunately a lot of us are not so i think one of the easiest and smartest way to do is to always have a fixed allocation um, you know to debt funds which will probably help you tide some of your emergency needs 
or some of your needs which are coming up and then if you see that there is a need coming up in next two years you buffer up that portion using an uh, systematic withdrawal plan right so that is something which is very helpful um, what was the second question that you asked the minimum investment horizon one should have when investing in equity so in equity markets if you look at the past variations uh if you go back and say that i invested in equity markets and waited for a 15 year period 15 the returns are never negative right they always turn out to be positive so for example if you were to ask me what is the most optimum time to invest in indian equity markets time horizon data shows that it is 15 years that means there is a 0% probability as per historical data that may change in the future that you will end up not losing money over a 15 year period but from a very very specific short term point of view i think the shortest term in equity market should be more than 5 to 7 years that is the minimum time that uh, uh, equity investment should be given to at least start giving some useful returns or you know start giving some decent idea about what kind of uh, returns it can offer you to reach your goal so second important point why 5 to 7 years i think that is also very important because you see that businesses t- uh, move in cycles right it takes a while for businesses to make money and there are different cycles even in the economy over a 5 to 7 year period we've seen historically generally one business cycle gets completed right that means the downturn and the upturn both get completed so this is the time where businesses will probably deliver returns at least either in the initial part or in the end part right so you get to capture that whole business cycle and expect returns uh, coming from your investments understand um, do you have any other stories to tell us sahil so one of the key ideas that i practice is uh, how peaceful my investment journey is because there is a lot of noise in investing a lot of people read a lot of news we get a lot of information specifically for people who are in financial industry the amount of noise and news that we get every day is very very large right so it can make you act uh, and those actions could not could be favorable or could be unfavorable right depending on how you act so one of the things is how peaceful am i how prepared am i uh, in my investment journey so one of the things which i practice is uh, you know uh, planning ahead of for what is going to happen in the next 5 to 10 years so as i said goal planning is very very important to narrate a very short story on you know what planning is or how important it is so there is a farmer who wants to hire people to work at his farm and he takes lot of interviews 10 20 people come some people tell him that they understand how to do irrigation you know they understand how to do fertilizers and you know what is the correct proportion of medicine to be given to plants they can increase the yields but he doesn't really like any of the answers so there is a small young 17 year old boy Uh, who tells the farmer that i can sleep when the wind blows right he gives that answer he says that so when farmer ask him why should i hire you he says that i can sleep when the wind blows and that uh, you know surprises the farmer he says that this is a very unique boy let me you know employ him and uh, the boy does very well the field flourishes but after a period of time there is a very very large storm and uh, very gusty winds blow and the farmer you know runs to his farm and he feels that everything would have been blown away his fields would have been ruined and cattle and animal would be helter skelter uh, then he goes there and he finds that the boy is sleeping right he is actually sleeping and he, he is petrified he feels that uh, i would have made a very large loss today and then he rushes and sees his field everything is in order uh, the harvest is done animals are being tied at a place and then he comes and talks to the boys uh, talk to the boy and he says that i told you earlier that i sleep when the wind blows that means i have prepared i prepared for this day much before than it occurred and uh, that is the reason that when everything is going out of favor and everything everybody is uh, you know under duress i am able to sleep peacefully i think this is a very important lesson uh, that if you are prepared if your asset allocation is right uh if you have not done any uh if you have not uh, you know gone and participated in any euphoria or in any depression there is a good likelihood that your investment journey will be very very smooth and it's very important that uh, your investment journey is 
boring or somewhat irrelevant you should not be waking up at night and you know seeing your investment returns it should happen in the background i think that is something which only planning can do so this is a good lesson to learn this also reminds me of a saying by warren buffett where he said uh, when forced to choose i will not trade even a night's sleep for the chance of extra profits thank you so much for joining us today sahil and thanks for sharing beautiful stories with us thank you thanks a lot that's all for now in this episode listeners if you have any queries or suggestions you can reach out to me on twitter my handle is at satya sontanam s a t y a s o n t a n a m or you can also write to us at mintmoney@livemint.com bye bye This was a Mint production brought to you by HD Smartcast. HD Smartcast.